I was telling my team the story about the two wolves, where you have two wolves inside you, and one wolf is the one who's making the right decisions and makes you proud of yourself, and the other wolf is the one who's making all the wrong decisions, and you don't end up liking yourself. It's like, well, which, which wolf wins? And the answer is the wolf that you feed. Yeah. Like, either wolf could win, yeah. but the wolf that you feed is the one that gets stronger. So how do you feed the good wolf? Well, every decision that you make that makes you proud of yourself is feeding the good wolf. Mm -hmm. And every time you lie, every time you cheat, every time you say you're gonna do something and you don't follow through, to yourself, not even to other people. Yeah. You tell yourself you're going to the gym and you don't show up, you're feeding the bad wolf. He's getting stronger. Now, the next time you make a commitment, you don't know if you're going to follow through or not. You've, you're training yourself that I don't follow through. Yeah. So your yeah. future goal is like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do that. The, the, the bad wolf is growing stronger and stronger and stronger. And so it's a daily battle to keep feeding the good wolf so that the future you will continue to be proud. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I watch these videos every day because I need them for motivation. Being around successful entrepreneurs every morning helps me believe that I can do great things too. It's like your morning coffee, but for your goals, kickstarting your day with a blast of positivity. So here is a challenge for you. Try watching one video every morning for the next 30 days, and let's find out together if they help you do great things too. If you're in, leave a hashtag believe in the comments below so I can celebrate with you. So today you get to learn from me and my team's take on my top 10 rules of success. Believe. Rule number two is develop self-belief. I don't think you're ever done believing in yourself. There's always another level. And so if I look at, I'm what, I'm 43 now. And if I go back to my first real business, I was 19. Man, if 19-year-old Evan believed in himself like 43-year-old Evan does now, it would be amazing. But at the same time, I'm not done either. If, if 83-year-old Evan came back to 43-year-old Evan, it's the same message. Hey, you got to believe in yourself more to do the next big thing. When starting your show, I'm sure there's at the beginning, you maybe you didn't believe in yourself. Who's going to watch my show? And how do I get started? And all these things. And now to do a show is not as big a deal. It's like you've done, you've done a whole bunch. Closing in on 100. It's exciting. But it's okay. What's the next level? Because there's always another level. And so... I think the world's biggest problem is people don't believe in themselves. I think whatever cancer is a problem. Yes. Okay. I think the woman who solves cancer would have already solved it by now, but she's a manager at some accounting firm because she never believed in herself to go into med school or to solve this grand challenge and so settled for a smaller life. And I think that's what most people do. Rule number three is turn distractions into opportunities. How can us young people uh, focus, find purpose, um, and avoid, like you always say, avoid going to a job we hate, uh, going back home into a home that's too small in the future? I would look at what are you getting distracted by? Because the answer might be in there. So if you're, if you're getting distracted because you're going on YouTube and you're watching Minecraft videos, maybe you should be a Minecraft creator. If you're getting distracted by going on, on Instagram and looking up avocado recipes, maybe you should be doing something with avocados and cooking and recipes. Like, Think about what you're getting distracted by and then how can you turn that into a career because it's never been easier or more possible. If you're sitting in history class and you're hating it and you're daydreaming and you don't want to think about the Civil War or whatever you're being taught, right? Some people love history and that, that should be their thing, but pick your worst subject what are you daydreaming about? Shoes, music, cooking? Like, what are you daydreaming about? Whatever you're getting distracted by likely has the answer for what you should be doing. Rule number four is know your why. I like to go from why to how to who. So at the beginning of what you're doing, you're going to start blessings. How many episodes have you done? I'm up to about 70 something. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. At the beginning, it's hard. At the beginning, there's all this uh, self-doubt. Who's going to watch my show? Uh, who, does the world need another podcast? Do I even have another voice? Is anybody going to care? Uh, all uh, What is my studio going to look like? And all of these things that we think about. And the thing that gets you through is actually not the how, it's the why. At the beginning, it's the why. Why are you doing this show? Why is it so important that this thing exists? So at the very beginning, the why really matters. I, I'm, I want to create a show to spread blessings around the world. If you can feel connected to what you're doing, you're much more likely to get going. And so at the beginning, it's really just about creating momentum and that's remembering the why. Then it moves into the how. And the how is, okay, I, I feel connected to the mission. I want to start my podcast. 
great. I'm going to, I need to figure out what I'm doing. I need to get a camera. I need to ask people that they want to come on my show. I need to get my blessings sign and some tulips. And I need to, yeah, I'm sure the sets evolved over the years too. It probably didn't start off this way, or maybe it did. Uh, I just got that. Perfect. It's like it, it evolves and it grows. And if we come back in three years, it'll be even better, right? It'll be ongoing change. But that then it goes to the how. And the how is how do we just, we need to start doing something. But then as you continue to build, evolve, and grow, it moves to the who. Because as your mission gets bigger, there's no way for you to how everything. The why is still there, but there's no way for you to how everything. Because there's too many things that have to get done. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight our favorite lessons from the video that will inspire you to remember what you learned today and actually apply them. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five is build your personal brand. In today's society, uh, personal brand is becoming really important. Um, what is a way that you can have your personal brand stick out from others? I think it's important to think about what is a story that only you can share. Mm -hmm. So you can look at the trends, you can look at what people are putting up, but inside of that, what is a story that only you can share? So for me, I'm a visual learner, so I could talk about being a visual learner. I'm an introvert, I could talk about being an introvert. I've made 10,000 videos, I can talk about making 10,000 videos. If you're just following some trend but you don't have a unique perspective on it, it's probably not gonna do so well. Yeah. So what are the stories that only you can share? So you're, you're basically being one of one. What does that look like for you? And it might take some time to figure that out at the beginning when you're on your career. If you're gonna be a content creator, well, you don't know how to make content yet. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to copy other people. You model, you see what other people are doing and, and you do it. But if all you do is copy other people, you're gonna be an Elvis impersonator. You know, I, don't mm -hmm. know if, I don't know if the audience knows an Elvis impersonator, but basically people who make their whole career out of pretending to be Elvis Presley, yeah. who's a very famous American singer. Uh, but that's, that's the height of your career. It's like you're a copy of somebody else. So you'll never be the original, you'll just be a, a copy of somebody else. So at the beginning, it's okay to copy, because how do you know? But in the doing, you then figure out, how do I mix this thing with my own unique elements? Mm -hmm. As you start making videos, you'll start finding things you can add in that other people aren't doing. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to plan it out. If, like, if I'm just sitting here on this chair and I'm trying to plan out my future as a content creator and never done anything, you're not going to have any degree of accuracy in what you create. But yeah. it's in the doing by modeling other people and then seeing how, how can I add my own unique twist to things yeah. that your style, your voice, your unique angles start to come out. Rule number six is learn to compromise. It's recognizing what what can you control? You know, if your parents don't support, let's take the worst case. Your parents don't support your podcast. Your parents say, Ben, this is stupid. Uh, you need to go become a whatever, a doctor, a lawyer. You can't be a podcaster. Well, you're probably too young to move out, right? I mean, at some point you have to become an adult, right? At some point, 14, maybe a little young, but maybe, I mean, maybe it's 16, maybe it's 18, Maybe it's 20, like at what point are you an adult and you're gonna start to live your life? This is a very interesting time, like between 14 and 18, is to start realizing that I need to be able to start living my life. So it's like, what's the small version? So I'm looking at compromises. So if you're, and I'm not saying your parents don't want you to do the podcast, I'm sure they're super supportive, but like, let's go with the worst case scenario. Well, your parents probably love you, right? Like chances are your parents love you. Uh, and for everybody listening, watching, your parents probably love you. They just don't understand the world that exists for you right now. Your parents at 14 uh, were totally different. The opportunities available to them were totally different. If you are a 14-year-old and you're going to call up and have a conversation with a 40-year-old, it's like, wait, what? And what are you talking about? It's just super weird. So they want you to have success. They just see success totally differently than what you see it as right now. Uh, so they probably love you. Now, they have different 
expectations of you. And as long as you're under their roof, you have to at least try to match it so you don't get into trouble. So if they're saying, okay, well, what we really care, Ben, is that you get good grades in school. Great. So if I get, if I get straight A's in school, can I have my podcast? Like, right? That's the negotiation, right? It's like, hey, so you're under their roof. This is the deal. You're going to study hard. You're going to get your straight A's or whatever it is. And then you get to do your thing on the side. Rule number seven is practice positive self-talk. You continue to believe in yourself in spite of your insecurities. So whose voice do you hear in your head telling you that you can do it? A combination of a few. The first is my best self. So I'm talking to myself constantly and saying, okay, Evan, let's go. You got this. You can do this. It's going to be a great day. Let's go. You're going to have a great session with Mitzvah. It's going to be awesome. Let's, like I'm constantly just... <laughs> I guess if you can hear the conversation in my own head, I might be put in an asylum or something, but it's like I'm constantly talking to myself and trying to cheer myself on. <laughs> the second is my parents. My mom would always say, you're Evan Kostrilli Carmichael, you do anything you believe that you can. And that's a constant reminder. There's a, there's a giant picture of my parents right there in front of me as a reminder. And then the third is all the people that I profile. You, you mentioned a top 10 series on my channel. I profile successful people because I want to be around them every day because I want to learn something from them every day. And when I see Elon Musk thinking about a backup plan for the earth by going to Mars, it's, man, I thought I was thinking big. And here is like backup plan for all of humanity and not using that as a kick down like I suck and I'm not thinking big enough, but as a push forward to say, wow, this is these people are doing amazing things and therefore I can too. Rule number eight is create a schedule. How do you stay consistent? I think it's really important to have two things. One, that you have a schedule that keeps you on track every day, starting with your morning routine. So I think most people wake up like an accident. I think most people, the first thing they do is they hit the snooze button on their alarm clock. And what does that tell you? That is, you set a goal the night before that I'm going to wake up at whatever, seven o'clock this morning. And the very first thing you do every day is say, slam, it's okay not to hit my goals. That's the first thing most people do every day is they tell themselves that okay not to hit my goal. That's really hard hard to set yourself up for a great day when the very first thing you're doing, likely multiple times per day hitting the snooze in the morning is uh, that it's okay not to hit my goal. So first thing, like just get up and have a schedule, especially a morning routine that sets you up for success. Don't wake up like an accident. Do the thing that gets you feeling inspired, bold, confident every morning, whatever that is. For me, I like watching a video. I like learning from somebody who's at success. And then I also like sharing it. So I'll always wake up and I'll share a message on my Instagram. That's a, just an inspiring message for the day. And then I'm good to go for the person asking the question, whatever it is for you. Like maybe you need to listen to an episode of this podcast every morning, huh? That's a good way to get fired up. Maybe you need to put on some reggae tunes. Maybe you need to dance outside with your cat. Like whatever the thing is, it gets you feeling motivated, bold, confident. And we've all felt that. You know what it feels like to have that feeling? What did you do to get that? And then put that into your morning routine. I find that really, really helpful. Rule number nine is do hard things. If I say scary, difficult, or hard, I have to do it just because mm -hmm. I said it, that yeah. the fact that I'm scared of it is not a good enough reason anymore because everything you want is on the other side of scared. My family's been trained, my team's been trained to hear me say scary, difficult, or hard, say so you said it, like, oh crap, now I have to go do it just because. Um, and that might be a little crazy, weird duck for people, but it's helped me. The one that's more accessible and easy for people to grasp is that uh, we still want to serve. Just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you don't want to serve. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you don't want to help. That you've got a you've got a, you've got a message. You've got knowledge that if you were going to sit down with the person you were ten years ago, you could help that person. You could give that person guidance, love, even just a hug would be valuable, right? Depending on what we've all been through, some trauma, pain, struggle, suffering. It's why you're here. Entrepreneurs, the greatest thing is to, to serve and give back and help and obviously make money in the process of doing that, but we're here to, to serve and help. And so if you're silent, you're not helping people. Yeah. So you want to serve and give back. And so that every time I shift it from, I'm not here for me and making myself look good in front of Deepak or whoever, it's he's got a message and hasn't been asked an entrepreneurial kind of interview before. So I'm trying to get knowledge out of him that people can use. I'm here to serve. So it's not about me anymore. It's about who I'm trying to help. And that calms me down. So depending on the day and the situation, I, I rotate between the two. Like I do difficult things and I'm here to serve. And sometimes it's like 90, 10, or sometimes it's 50, 50, but those two things 
help me get up on stage or doing that interview to get the message out. Easy means you're only doing things you know how to do. So you're just stuck doing, you actually hate your life. Like you're just photocopying the same day over and over and over again. Right. I think that if there's nothing in your calendar that scares you, you actually hate your life. You want to grow, you want to learn. And that has to come with some dose of fear. Otherwise it's a lifetime of regret. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips is enjoy the process. Something I've always wanted to do is start a business. And I've, like you said, when you were 14, you were doing the um, trading cards. And, you know, when I was uh, young, I also used to, you know, sell avocados on the street. And in fact, but now I want to get into something a lot more serious. But I find myself getting really excited about these new projects. But then after a month, it kind of wears down, like, you know, the shiny object syndrome. So what are your tips on, you know, staying committed and following through? You have to love the process of it. So how do you avoid the shiny object syndrome? Often that's the result. You know, it's like I, you like the result of making money. You like the result of helping this person. You like the result of um, being able to, to put that work in and, and help people and have extra cash in your pocket. Like you like the result. Do you like picking avocados? Do you like looking after the avocado tree and watering it? Do you like having a, like, maybe no, right? So that's, that's the problem. You you have to like both the result as well as the actual process of doing it, right? So if I look at me, I've done over 10,000 videos on YouTube and people ask me, don't I burn out? Like, no, because I, I like it. Like talking to you right now, this isn't work for me. I like it. It's fun. You've done your research. You're asking great questions. I don't look at this on my calendar and say, oh my God, okay, I got to do an interview. Who's this guy? Ben, what are we talking about? I, I look forward to it. I open up my calendar like, oh, this is going to be fun. I can't wait to talk to this guy, right? So the result is going to be an interview that you know goes on your show and maybe gets me more views or gets you more subscribers or whatever. Great. But the actual process, you've done a lot of work to research my story, to come up with all your questions, uh, which is great. Did you enjoy the process of doing that? Did you enjoy the process of, of, of us talking here, right? If yes, then this could be your business. If no, then I think it's great to explore. Throughout that journey, <clears throat> there had to be some kind of perspective on the monetary gain of the growth of the gain of growth of, of, of that respect. Was it always like, I want to serve people or how did you kind of get past that first jump in the beginning where, I mean, a lot of people aren't really focused on serving. They're just focused on getting to a point where they can serve uh, sustainably, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I like making money. You have, you have to make money. If you have mm-hmm. a big mission, if like, even if you want to serve, I'm service first, like mission first, purpose first, mm-hmm. uh, change the world first. Awesome. And you have to learn to make money. So I, I say money can't be number one, but it's got to be in your top five. If making money is in your top hundred, you're not going to make money. And, and then you're just helping people on the evenings and weekends, which is still great, but it's not what you could be doing, right? We've got over 50 people on my team now because we know how to make money. And if we didn't, then I'd be doing this. My, I probably wouldn't be on here talking to you because I'd have to do a million other things in my business just to keep the, you know, the thing going. And so whether you're doing um, advertising or brand deals or sponsorships, or you have a product or service that you're selling, figuring out how you're going to make money is really, really, really important, uh, especially in the early days, uh, because that's, that is usually the thing that kills most people's dreams. It kills most people's podcasts and shows. It's like, man, that was so much fun to do, but I can't justify the time doing it anymore because I, I need to make money. And so I have to go back and get a job. Tell us what is one thing you do every morning to set your day up for success? Um, I've got a bunch. I'm trying to think like what would be a really cool or different one. Um, Thinking about service, right? Like it's so easy to get complacent as an achiever. So thinking about like what I do today has to matter. I want to create something meaningful that's going to help impact other people's lives today and putting that pressure like tomorrow is a different day. Today, something important has to happen. Giving has to be a part of the morning routine. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to think about that. Yeah. Whether that's, whether that's actually giving in terms of like, you're going to take a call with somebody and mentor them. 
uh, or you're going to buy the coffee for the person behind you in line, or you're just going to meditate and pray for somebody. Like I'm thinking of somebody in my head and I'm, I want them to have love today. And you're like focusing your energy on supporting somebody else. Giving will make you feel so much more alive and has to be a part of your daily routine. I was curious if you like found yourself taking on personality traits of like recklessness, like the, you went way far on the other side and like discernment was starting to get grayed. The lines were starting to get blurred. Has any of that ever crept into like, I know I don't want to live with regret, so I'm going to go all in on the other side. I don't think that happens. Mm, okay. You know, there's planners and doers and the planners need to do more and the doers need to plan more. But it's very rare that a planner just becomes a doer and stops planning. Yeah. Right? So there's people who just plan things for years and then they still don't do anything. And there's people who just take action, but they're like all over the place and tomorrow's a different action. The next day is different, and there's no plan or strategy and they end up just running around in circles, tons of action, but not moving anywhere. You're mm -hmm. just running in a circle. And so I think it's, it's uh, I haven't really seen people move from one category to the other, but whatever category you're in, you need more of that other thing. People ask me about humility. It's like, well, you're humble and all this stuff. It's like, okay, well, I need more bravado. I would be doing my, my mission more service if I had a little more bravado and ego and look at me and chest thumping. It's taken me a long time to come out of my shell and even say yes to any interview. Like I've done enough of these now, but if this was 10 years ago, I would have said no. I would have said no, Nicholas, like, or what are your questions? I need to know everything you're going to ask me because I'd be afraid right. of letting you down or letting your, your show down. And so I think whatever those personality traits are that you have, I haven't seen people completely move to the other side. And if anything, you need more of that in your life. So I, and I would think most people need more of the let's not live with regret because most people live with regret. And there's some few crazy people might have a gene missing or something who like are just insanely reckless and don't care. And maybe they need a little more caution and planning yeah, and right. strategy, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's the self-awareness to know what you need most. Yeah. Self-awareness definitely helps. When you're having those days, what do you tell yourself or who helps you on those days? Because we can't all have 10 out of 10 days, right? Like we wish we could, but they're not always going to be a 10 out of 10. We have to accept that sometimes there's a 2 out of 10 or a 4 out of 10. What do you do on those days? Yeah, so uh, my habits save me for most of most of the time. Um, I uh, almost every day will have a believe walk, and and that's part of my morning routine. I wake up, I get outside, I go for a believe walk, and that's getting fresh air. But I'm also I'm also listening to one of my own videos and responding to people in my community to remind me of the thing that I'm doing. Um, I haven't. Uh, this part's a little weird where like, I haven't wanted to quit. People say, what about quitting on you? I haven't thought about quitting ever on YouTube. Uh, it's too connected now to like serving and what I do, but do I have days that are um, lower energy or do I have days where I'm not thinking big enough? Oh, I mean, especially that one, a hundred percent. You know. Um, yeah. I think I think if you're consistently thinking about quitting, you have to you have to understand the reason why. Is it because you're afraid or is it because you don't want to do things? I think right. I think people stay in things too long. Like when people say don't quit, don't quit. I think people should off, often quit on businesses sooner, relationships sooner, jobs sooner because you'll never win doing work that you hate. But if the reason that you're quitting is because you're afraid, that's not a good enough reason. Um and so where I I'm challenging myself to do the most work is on bigger thinking. Like the biggest frustration for me is, okay, so if I'm at three and a half million subscribers, how do I get to 35, right? And, and how do I live in that vibe consistently? Um, if I'm feeling super low energy, I'll take a break. You know, mm -hmm. like I had people over at my house not too long ago for my birthday I've invested into a bunch of different entrepreneurs and I mentor them once a week and they came over. I don't really celebrate my birthday. So I was like, okay, come on over for my birthday and, and we'll hang out together. And we spent five days together and like all day, all night fell behind on like everything I was doing. <laughs> and then I had yeah. uh, the Monday where like everybody went home kind of Sunday night and uh, like, okay, I'm, I'm, 
I'm not doing anything today. You know, yeah. like my voice started to get a little sore. It wasn't as like, it was so much high energy. I need to, I need, this is today's recovery day. I think I post on Instagram, like recovery day today. I'll see you tomorrow. And I just checked out of everything that I was doing. We could take these businesses in different directions. Like if the goal is, is speaking, the key thing is getting to know the people who are hosting these events. Mm-hmm. Who are the people putting it on? And building a relationship with them. The easiest way to do that is the biz dev show. Mm. So you have them on your show. Mm-hmm. You already have a podcast. It's great. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you're selecting the guests to come on your show, mm-hmm. but now it's with an intent to, I want to get speaking gigs from this person or their network. Mm-hmm. Like, are you already thinking about that or how have you picked? I mean, the reason I started the podcast was to have a big personal development brand podcast. And so my concern in that is that a lot of the people I get on now are speakers, authors, you know, coaches, that stuff, which I understand I can't market to them because yeah. they're in the same game, but not to dilute the podcast, if that makes sense. So you have two choices there. One, you start a different show mm-hmm. geared just towards this. Mm-hmm. Or two, you find an angle that it feels right yeah. in your heart yeah. to have them on. Yeah. So if you're looking at who's putting on events for entrepreneurs, you can go research all the events for entrepreneurs. Uh, or even like, I don't know if you go into sales or if you go into mm-hmm. MLM. Yeah, I would, stuff. yeah. Great. So all of those conferences or people who are selling insurance, like all of these things, they're like pseudo entrepreneurs, insurance yep. Yep. people are, yeah, yeah. you're kind of an entrepreneur, but yeah, you're yeah. not. Way less risk, yeah. Right? Yeah. Real estate, same thing. Yeah. You're an entrepreneur, but there's like a support system around yeah. it. So there's lots of events happening around those things. Yeah. You find a list of all the events, you find a list of who's organizing them, you invite them on your show to be a guest. They care about personal development. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't be putting on these events. True. Yeah. Why put on an event for entrepreneurs or real estate professionals or MLM industry or whatever? Yeah. They care about this stuff. Do you personally connect with them enough that it feels right in your heart to have them on the show? You can make a judgment call. Yeah. Whether it's a fit for the main show or you start a different show around it. Yeah. But that's going to be your fastest path to get speaking gigs. Right. Talk to the people who are hosting the events. Yeah. Other speakers and authors... Not that they see you as competition, yeah. But they're they're probably going to take the deals that they like the best for sure, you know. And they may not remember you or pass like they they have lots of entrepreneur friends and speaker friends that you may not be the first person that they call, yeah. If they want to turn it down, that's right, yeah, right. So yeah. it's not that it's not possible; it's just a much longer road, yeah. So if we want to be strategic and get, we want to get deals for our speaking gig, like that's the fastest way to really do it, yeah. And it's not that difficult to execute. Try to pay attention to the micro moments where you're feeling like something's not great. So we had our first session on Instagram Live. It was great. You know, your team messages me for round two. Like, yeah, let's go. Round two with Craig down, right? But if you have somebody else, if somebody on your team who is bringing you down for one day, it's like, huh, okay, that's interesting. If it happens the second day or second week, you're like maybe it's worth talking and see what's going on. If it keeps happening, like maybe that person shouldn't be in your life. Yeah. And so it's constantly paying attention to the things that give you energy and take away. It's really just about energy management than anything else. You're talking about balance, like pay attention to your energy yeah. and do more of the things and be around more of the people that give you energy. And my work gives me energy. I'm, yeah. I'm leaving with more energy with this interview than I came in. Same. Right. So like this didn't deplete me. It filled me up. This is great. Thank you. Absolutely. And like we want to strive to do more things that give us energy as opposed to deplete. And that applies to your relationships, your work, your sleep, your your fitness routine, your food, all of it. Does it give you more energy or does it take away? What kept you going? Five I thought I had like two thousand after five years. Nine thousand sounds great. I could be at nine thousand. Um (laughs) what kept me going was I always just focused on who I was serving instead of who I wasn't. I think the biggest problem that we face is you make a video, you release this video. I don't know how many people end up watching this, but I think at the beginning you make a video and like 40 people watch the video and you feel like, man, I'm a total failure. I spent all that time did all this work, all this editing, whatever. And only 40 people watched it. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a loser. This isn't going to work where I always thought of, man, 40 people watch this thing? That's pretty dope. That's awesome. Like, imagine you're going to go give a speech at a library or something and 40 people showed up. You'd be pretty excited to have 40 people sit there. But because it's online, we tend to not um, make it count as much. And we see other people hitting millions and you only hit 40, you feel like a loser. So I just always focus on who I was serving instead of who I wasn't. And that allowed me to keep going through. 
Um, you know, at the time too, there wasn't like being a YouTuber wasn't even really a thing. Nobody had a million subscribers. So there wasn't even anybody to like model or, or connect with or go after, but that was always a secret. And and same thing now, if I'm, if I'm doing, if I'm doing a speech and there's 5,000 people in the audience or five, it's like, okay, if we have five people in the audience, I can serve them on a much, we'll make it a round table. I'll just go around and coach them individually versus 5,000. You're speaking to the stage, but just always focus on who you are serving instead of who you're not. Doing the work is torture for most people. If you look at my channel, we're doing three videos a day. For a lot of people, jumping into my work schedule would be torture for them. It would be torture. It's like, it's just too much work. <laughs> right. And it's great. And it's like, I love it though. Like I chose, I chose this life. I love the work I'm doing. I love being here talking to Dick. You know, I, this is, this is good. This is happy for me. Other people are like, oh, I got to talk to Dick. I got to be on a, a live stream. I'm panicking. I'm freaking out. You put me in that landscaping job. I had a landscaping job. I would die, man. Like I hated that job. <laughs> but for other people, it's like, you know what? I love being outside. I love, I love being fit. I love my friends here. Like it's just to be successful in anything, you have to enjoy the work that you're doing. And not everything is great. You know, not every day is roses. You're going to have a lot of crap that you deal with. And the thing that gets you through all the crap is just the love for the process. And so I think it's still important to have goals. It's nice, but more important than the goal is the journey to get there. I've heard you discuss that 80% of the content system is getting people to have an emotional reaction to what you create. What strategies do you have in place to ensure your audience has an emotional connection with your content? You need to have an emotional connection to the content. Mm. So you do an interview show. How many of these have you done on this channel? We're approaching 171, 171 about? 170, 171 interviews. Okay. Yeah. So like if you're going to do interviews, you better like doing interviews. Yeah. Amen. Because you're going to be 171 interviews in and then hate your life. So for people like, I'm going to start a podcast. Cool. But you better like talking to people. Even if you're like, I'm introverted, I'm shy. It's not natural or normal, but I like serving. And so this is one of the ways to do it. But if you don't, if you're doing it just as a strategy, you're going to lose. You have to actually be curious about people. And then you have to bring on guests who you actually care about. Right. So if you brought on a guest who like you love their story and you love something that they've done, then that's going to light you up. And if it lights you up, it'll light up the audience versus if they're on just for a strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's like, I'm going to bring on somebody to talk about passive income because it's trending, but like you don't care about passive income. Right. Then it's going to be the most boring. uh, Maybe you do. I don't know. But it'd be the most boring interview, you know, of all time. And so the key is, is making content that you deeply connect with, that you get super excited by, and your energy will create energy for the people watching. Like, oh my God, this guy's so excited by it. I'm going to get into it too. When did you start the habit of replacing those negative thoughts with positive ones? And then when did you start to see them take root and actually manifest in your life? I didn't know that I made a conscious choice that like now I'm going to replace this thought with this thought. I think it's just as a result of being in the industry so long, watching so many, like if you think about what I do and how many videos I watch of how many successful people, they all have some core themes to them. And whether it's entrepreneurs or athletes or artists or musicians or whoever, they have similar themes and, and you know, turning lemonade or turning lemons into lemonade, you know, turning the negative into a positive is, is a consistent theme across everybody. And so I think it just, it happened subconsciously just by being in the environment of having those people around me virtually to the point where I was doing that exercise, being forced to sit with negative thoughts and it, it, I had changed, but I didn't notice. Like I don't, there was no moment of coming out of the cocoon and now I'm a butterfly. It just slowly <laughs> became a here I am as a butterfly. Gotcha. So it was just going through the process. Yeah. It, it's, it's like, imagine if you were working out your legs every day, <laughs> you, you don't, you don't, you don't see a day to day difference. Right. There's no one moment like, oh, you did one extra hard set and now you've got these rippling calves ready to go. Right. Yeah. But I think the only difference was I wasn't even 
consciously training. It was just because it was in my environment. And I think that happens for a lot, I think that happens for most people just in a negative way. You're constantly watching news and Twitter streams and all of this negativity, and all of a sudden, you know, you start to become a negative person because of all the things that are happening around you. But it's not that you can pinpoint one thing that that was the moment you became negative or even notice that you're becoming negative, mm -hmm. it's just happening. Yeah. And so that's the power of when you shift your environment and you're controlling what you're consuming into your, you know, into your brain. So I was conscious of what I was consuming. Mm. I wasn't conscious about a lot of the transformation that happened as a result. It's only in looking back or doing exercises like that um, that I notice a difference. I mentioned grief as a caveat because that's the only one that I don't think you can, you can just positive your way out of. Sure. You know, like I think you just have to feel your way through grief, at least me. You know, I, have, I haven't lost my parents, so that's awesome, but um, my family dog was like, that was the only time I haven't made videos in the past 10 years was when my family dog passed away. Wow. Uh, because he died on filming day and I just couldn't film. And I, I could have, if it was anything else, if I was jealous, if it was angry, if I got cut off on traffic, if I lost a bunch of subscribers, I don't know, if something else happens, like, okay, come on, let's go, Carmichael, like, like, film. But I just didn't feel right to push past it to film. You know, like I filmed with a concussion and a broken neck and all this yeah. other stuff, but when, when Toby passed, like, I don't know, it doesn't feel right to just brush it away, and so I just have to feel this. For someone who wants to create this master morning routine, yeah. you know, it's one thing to just listen or to see what other people are doing, but how can they actually create one for themselves? So I, I split it into two. The first part is what has made you bold, powerful, confident, alive, right? It, it's happened to you, you've felt it, it's just not consistent, that's the yeah. problem. For most of us, it's not consistent. You have these moments of boldness, like I can do anything, and then you wake up tomorrow, like I can't do that <laughs> thing anymore, and we just live in the world of, I can't do it, but you, you feel like you're capable of more, but you're afraid to take action. So in those moments where you have felt boldness, what did you do just before? Did you, did you have a conversation? Did you meditate, pray, like whatever the thing was? Yeah. Then that's not even pulling from somebody else, that's you. You've already felt boldness. What happened, how did you do it? Now try to plan that in your morning routine. And that can be different for other people. For me, it's helping people. And so the easiest way to do it is by going live on Instagram. Um, then it's pulling from different people to see what are they doing and how can you apply it? I love small tests. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about journaling before, yeah. before we went live. Um, so a lot, lots of people do journaling. Tim Ferriss does journaling, like lots of successful entrepreneurs do journaling. So okay, I'm gonna, great, idea to action. I'm yeah. huge on idea, you get an idea, go do something about yes. it. Yes. What is your superpower? What is my superpower? Yeah. Believe in people. Yeah, so I thought. Yeah. You know, I think whatever the thing is that, um, you know, what's my biggest kryptonite? Believing in myself, you know, like the thing, the thing that you want to give to the world is also the thing that you need the most too. So now people say, well, you're the believe guy. How do you not believe in yourself? Well, I believe in myself to get here to do everything that I've done. It's, it's the next step. The, the next level of Evan Carmichael is on the other side of even more belief. And as I learn and improve and grow and figure out some new strategies, I'm going to then share it with my audience as well. I love how you like you, we interrupt this book writing to show you what I did last night at three in the morning. I think that was really, really cool because it lets the readers kind of get into your mindset at the time of, man, this guy was he was on it all the time, which I think is really, really neat. Um, well, and sometimes you get these ideas and I'm a big believer in following the momentum. So when you get an idea at three in the morning, what do you do? Well, I decided I would get up and just write. I have this thing. And I know I'm not going to sleep anyway, and I could yeah. write down a couple ideas, but then I'm not. I'm going to ruin my sleep anyway. So I'm just going to get up and write for a couple hours, and then, you know, go back to bed. And that's a lot of times how we get momentum. Is like you, you have ideas. Maybe you listen. Maybe people are listening to Ken right now. It's like I've got this idea. I've been sitting on this thing for a year, and I haven't taken any action. Like use this as your permission to just start creating the thing. And you don't need to have the perfect plan. You just need to start what your current morning routine looks like. So I go through five S's. Uh, sing, sun, soar, sweat, scare. So sing, I put on music right away. And any song that will get you, like if it came on, you'd have to bounce and you'd have to sing, right? Yeah. Um, so right now, there's a, there's a Chinese rap that I did. It's a Chinese song that I did a rap in English on top of. Yeah. And so I, I play that every morning. Um, 
Chinese rap is it like dance or is it like uh, straight up like hardcore rap? Uh, I'm rapping. Yeah. To a Chinese song. So there's this woman <laughs> who's rapping, and I sped her up, and then I'm rapping over the parts where she's not singing. That was a fun little project that I worked on. Um, so I like it. It makes me move. So I, I'm rapping to my own song every morning while it comes on. But whatever song gets you up and ready to go, because we wake up and you know you're tired and starting your day, and so music is the fastest way to change your state. Like as soon as it comes on, in, in five seconds you can already be feeling better, right? Oh yeah. And there's no one magical song. It's whatever it is for you and the audience. Um, then sun. So I like to get outside. Yeah. So we got two dogs. They're in here with us today. I like to get outside, outside just to get some fresh air on my face. We're in Toronto. It's December. There's not a lot of sun happening right now. <laughs> but just, just getting out of your environment, even if you work from home, the, the walk from just your bedroom to the office, you can carry with that still the oh, tired right. energy of the bedroom, right? So get outside. Get some fresh air. Even if it's... Um, just go out on the balcony and just take in some sun for a little bit. Mother nature. Mother nature makes a difference. Um, then soar. So this is the most important part. What is the thing that you need to do every day that makes you feel bold, powerful, unstoppable, confident, alive? Whatever that thing is, do it first thing in the morning. Instead of waiting, like maybe it's listening to the Paper Paradise podcast or watching the video series now, it's happening. <laughs> if that's a thing, then, then you watch it every morning. You listen to it every morning. Um, most of us don't have enough intention behind the day. Yeah. And so I know it's part of what you do in the morning too, but for me it's, uh, I go live on Instagram. So service, if I feel like the work that I'm doing matters, is important, I'm serving somebody, it, it makes me more amped up for the day. Totally. So, so I'll go live on Instagram every morning and people join in from around the world asking questions and I help them and it's a quick half hour. Um, and that's what I need to do. So other people, maybe it's meditation, maybe it's prayer, maybe it's, something, like anything, whatever the thing is that makes you feel bold, powerful, confident, if you started your day with the thing that made you feel bold and powerful, your, your year is going to look totally different. Like where you are in one year will be totally different than where you are right now. Amen. Um, and then the last two are just sweat and scare. So I'll do a workout and then hop into a cold shower. because Like what do you like to do me. for working out? Um, usually I'll do uh, 100 push-ups, 100 squats. What am I doing now? 100 push-ups, 100 squats, and 100 jumping jacks. Yeah. yeah. And then you do like the Wim Hof. The whole like cold hot. That's it. Uh, not hot, just cold. Just cold. Just cold. Yeah, yeah. There's no hot in the Wim Hof. It's no, no. I mean like the cold, like the whole the the heat and coolness. Like you get really worked out, like sweaty. Oh and yeah. Then you do the cold. Then we jump into the cold. Yeah. The AI tools are incredible. Yeah. So it, it, like if you're not interested in AI and you're not applying it to your business and not following along, you're you're losing. Like you need everybody needs to figure out AI in their business. A hundred percent. It's getting better by leaps and bounds, like every week. There's some new tool, there's some new thing you can do, it's crazy. We've already uh, accidentally posted a video of me on my channel. My wife thought it was me and she posted it to my Instagram and it wow. wasn't me. It wasn't my video, it wasn't my voice, it wasn't my script. And my team was just playing around with it and sent it to us as a, hey, here's a demo. And she thought it was something that needed to be posted, so she posted it. What? Already. And like, it's only going to get worse and crazier and more authentic and more real. Like I could watch and say, that's not me, but I thought there's no way like people will know, but if it fooled my wife already, then it's going to fool everybody. Wow. Right. And what, and what's that software or it was, they put everything together from different AIs. It was different. There's the video AI and then there's a the script AI as it was like GPT oh. to write the video, like to write the script like use, write a script about belief in the voice of Evan Carmichael and then it pops something up, right? Um, and then 11 Labs to train the audio to actually have it sound like me. And I've trained my voice, right? So we've done the recordings yeah. and have all the samples. So we've trained my voice. I don't know uh, what I'm going to use it for yet, but I'm playing with it. Like you have to, you have to play with it. So train my voice. Uh, the video one, I don't remember which, we're playing with it on a bunch of video tools. So I don't remember which video tool we use to make it happen. Um, but yeah, like it, it, we posted it and wow. then I had to go back and say, Oh, this is, this is AI, Evan, you know, <laughs> but it's only gonna get better, but this is where NFTs come in. This is where, yeah. why it's so valuable because that's, that still requires a lot of it's, it's GPT plus 11 labs plus whatever video tool, you know, then to make it into an Instagram video. Like it's a lot of, it's a lot of mess to figure all that out. That's going to all going to go away. 
just like yeah. NFTs, it's hard to set up a wallet and figure out Ethereum and it's buy it and get it. Like it's 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 hard, but that's going to all go away. That's going to be the default, right? It's going to be easy in the future to make that happen. When you think of an entrepreneur, what do you think? If you were going to, to mentor a young person, what do you think the the one or two or three characteristics that you'd really want to see in somebody is before you said, you know what? Yeah, I think they're gonna they're gonna make it happen no matter what. I think there's some characteristics to winning. So a lot of the ones that you mentioned too, like persistence and dedication and hard work, is like that is definitely needed for our entrepreneurs. And they're just characteristics of winning. Like you could win and not be an entrepreneur and have persistence and dedication and faith and hard work. I think to to succeed as an entrepreneur, you have to want to make something different for your life and for others. Because there's there's always a path that's laid out for you. You know, if you're talking to kids, like your parents have a have an ideal plan for you. They right. would love for you to go and do blank in your school right. and guidance counselors. There's there's these very easy laid out plans of what you're supposed to do. You go to school and then you go to college and then you get a job and or or you don't go to college and you follow in like family footsteps and whatever it is. But there's there's very easy paths to follow for your career. Where being an entrepreneur usually means you have to step far outside those right. predetermined paths exactly. for you. And that's hard. You know, when nobody in your family has done it and when you don't have role models or mentors or or you know people like you to talk to, that's really, really hard to step outside those predetermined paths. And that's what an entrepreneur is willing to do is like not get stuck in the grooves that have been laid out for them when they're going to set a new path for themselves. It doesn't mean they'll be super successful. There's lots of entrepreneurs who are below the poverty line or like just <laughs> making enough money or, yeah, or right. it's just them and they're you know, they're just getting by. Like most entrepreneurs are not mega wealthy, um, but they're doing it because they just want to create their own path for themselves and for the people around them. You were making 80 videos in one day, you know, so you yeah. could do uh, basically all the videos for a month in one day. Um, do, one, do you still do that? And two, um, what's the logic behind that? And where do you find the time management for something like that? Because that's one of my uh, one of my big downfalls. I'm not so good with time management. That's something I'm learning myself. Yeah. So I don't do 80 a day anymore. That was when I was filming once a month. I film once a week now. And so we'll cut that back to 20-ish videos a week. Um, more because I'm spending more time on each of the videos. And my team is preparing things for me that, that we're not a month ahead on. Uh, for the time management, it's just... Your, your actions need to map to your ambitions. And so you have ambitions. And not just business ambitions, life ambitions. Like, I don't know if you're married or not, or kids or not, or but whatever your life ambitions are. Then I, I default to looking at my calendar. And I say, okay, I look at my week next week. If I did the things that are in my calendar for next week, am I moving closer to hitting my ambitions or not? So if, if, I'm, if I'm making videos, then yeah. But if I spend a week and there's no videos happening, then no, I'm not, I'm not getting closer to my ambitions. And so if you think that your time management is an issue now, you know, it only gets harder as you grow bigger. Like if you, I have 24 people on my team. It's harder. <laughs> you know, like I got to manage all these people on top of managing myself. Uh, and so one, I remind myself of whatever I'm doing right now, whatever challenge I think that's in front of me, I tell myself, this is just a warm up. Like this is just a warm up. I'm capable of, of more. I'm capable of more than what I'm facing right now. Because if you feel like the current problem is overwhelming, then that's the limit of what you're capable of doing. So this is just a warm up. Then I look at uh, I look at my calendar and I look at my goals and I see how do I how do I match these things up. Uh, I'm a I'm a huge believer, and this may not work for you, but I chunk my days. So Thursday is my public facing day. You know, I, I, we're talking on a Thursday. I don't know when you guys are going to launch this thing, but I'm an introvert. And so that may not come across. You may not believe me, but I am. And, and I need to get up for, for public. I call this public facing day. So I need to get up for my interviews. And it's been all day, interviews and podcasts and hangouts and, and meetups. And that's my Thursday every day. And I like that because I have a really hard time switching tasks, like to talk to you guys and be all fired up and energetic and then go and write my book. And then come back and then do another interview. Like I, I can't. The energy level, it's doable, but it just sucks so much for me that it's better for me to stay in one zone for the day. I find that super helpful. 
give us a definition of what is a little man and, and how you define that and maybe how you manage to, you know, ignore it, defy it as you were growing your business and your channel. Sure. So the little man is the hater in your life. It's the person who's telling you that you can't do it, pointing out all the reasons why your next podcast is not going to work or your big book or whatever your dream is, yeah. all the reasons why it's not going to work out. And often those are people, those are real people in our lives. Maybe it's our parents, our friends, our guidance counselor, our boss, you know, people in our community. Uh, and often it's ourselves. You know, the enemy is, is the enemy, right? Like you are your own enemy. Um, and so it, uh, oftentimes we have great big ideas that we're excited by. And then how often do we talk ourselves down from those big ideas after you sleep on it? And the next day you wake up like, oh, I can't do that. I'm yeah. uh, too. Nobody will listen to me on But before you even tell anybody else, it's your your own inner little man that is holding you back. Mm. So that's the little man. And, and rule number seven, it's there because it's one of the most consistent things that come up with big entrepreneurs and dreamers you're doing something that is crazy that is bold that has never been done before and whenever you do that you know if you're a change maker you're doing things that have never been done before and so you're going to get criticism you're going to get heat both from the outside world and the inside world and so the two things that i find really helped me personally with that one is just being around people who have to deal with criticism a lot and see how they react i think is valuable I think as an example, if you want to get more confident, better than reading a book on eight ways to get more confident, start hanging around confident people. If you do that, their mindsets, their beliefs, their attitudes will rub off on you. Like if you want to, if you want to be a change maker, better than just downloading some PDF with eight different ways on how to be a change maker, hang around Jay. Like he is a change maker. Just by hanging around him almost regardless of what he's talking about, it's gonna inspire some change within you. And the more you hang around Jay and guys like Jay, the more you listen to this podcast, then the more you're going to just be willed into making change for yourself. Just like if you're hanging around negative people all day long, you're gonna become negative, you're gonna complain more. Where if yeah. you're hanging around big game changing people, yeah. you're gonna start gravitating towards that, right? It's the concept of you are your, your best, closest friends around right, you. Right, right, right. Right. So, so that's one. So if you want to avoid the little man or, or learn how to ignore him, then you need to be around people who are dealing with big things and dealing with criticism. And chances are those aren't currently the people in your life. They're, they're other people. So for me, that's where I get it from the book. I get it from the videos, yeah. seeing how somebody reacts to criticism, say, huh, that's interesting. I would have, I would have felt, I would have taken that more critically, or I would have been hurt by that and seeing how they do it. If you do that consistently, it'll rub off on you. When it comes to serving or just building that belief within yourself, where do you think most people go wrong when it comes to trying to build more belief and actually start creating a life that, you know, they're fulfilled by, not just, you know, okay with? I don't think they're thinking about it as much as making money. Mm. Like if you, if uh, just your question, like what, what mistake do people make on, building a business that fulfills them. I don't think most people are asking themselves, what would be a business that fulfills me? Like that's the yeah. biggest problem. They're not asking the question. They might be saying, what's a business that makes me money. They might be saying, what's a business that uh, maybe can have a big impact. But if you say, what's a business that fulfills me, I don't think people are really asking that question. And that's a great quarterly check-in because the things that fulfilled you last year may not fulfill you anymore. You've maybe you've grown past them. Maybe that was a fun little experiment and you don't like that thing as much anymore. It doesn't fulfill you anymore and you need to move on. I think a lot of people stay in the same business or same relationship for too long because it doesn't actually fulfill them anymore. So the biggest mistake is just not asking the question. Ask the question, you'll get some good answers. Everybody has an off day, but it seems like you never do. And I think that, and I'm sure you still do, but when you're on in front of the camera, you're doing it for the viewers, you know what I mean? You're, you're putting your selfish, you know, bad day, I guess, aside and you're focusing on the product. And I think that's awesome. And that's really attractive to me as a viewer that you're willing to put in the commitment to spit out three videos a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I, uh, I suffocate negativity in my life. It happens, you know, maybe my wife isn't happy in the morning or maybe someone on my team is, is pissed off when they started the day or whatever. Right. My natural reaction is one to like try to avoid <laughs> that, that situation yeah. right yeah. for that time. And then just, I just get so excited. I don't know. My default is if there's negativity in my life, I need to suffocate it 
not give it any oxygen and go the other way. I don't know where that right. comes from, but it's not hard to get up for, it's not hard to get up for this. Like I'm talking to Dick, I'm pumped, let's do it. You know, right. even if something crappy happened just before, it doesn't matter, I'm ready to go. When I'm making the videos for the channel, it's the same thing. Like it's easy to get, it's at least as easy for me to get all excited about it because again, it's tied into the work that I do and, and why I, the, the why of what I do, I try to help entrepreneurs. I believe entrepreneurs are going to solve all the major world problems, not, not corporations and not, you know, not banks and not governments, it's entrepreneurs. And so if my work uh, adds a little bit, half a percent to make the difference for Dick or whoever to go out and push a little bit harder, that's meaningful to me. And so I try to take that with me when I'm going into filming day. Um, Absolutely. And just suffocate. Neg- like you have to, you have to suffocate negativity out to focus. But on. I think I love how fascinated you are to just learn and take what you're like from different people and then apply it and so forth. And it's, you'll never, not that you need to worry about this, but you'll never get stale or dull or re- repeat yourself too much. Cause you're constantly learning and applying and then giving back. It's awesome. Well, thank you. I mean, there's a lot in there. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, really, I'm just making videos and content and having guests on and being guests on shows that, that I'm curious about, you know, I love being on with you, Like you came to me through Dave and Dave's like, Hey, I got this new guy. I'm working with Craig. Can you hop on an IG live together? Right. I didn't know who you were, but it's Dave. So like, okay, happy to do it. Right. And then like, we're back for round two because round one was so good. Right. Yeah. And so I'm not as strategic of, uh, I need to do this person because it's going to help me grow my channel. It's more, what, what do I want to learn? If I just wanted to grow, I should go negative. If I did the top 10 stupidest things Kanye has said, that would, that'd be fire. People would love that stuff, right? People, but I'm trying to spread, it would make me feel gross because I want to create optimism and belief and hope for people. Can you talk a little bit about the team and, and how you feel about creating a team around you and how that works? Well, teams are are critical to grow and not everybody, like most small businesses are just a solopreneur. Um, but if you want to scale and grow, then you have to be able to work with the team and you have to like managing people. A lot of people right. don't like managing people. They like just being by themselves. But if you want to get you want to get a return out of it and you want to have fun, then you have to you have to want to mentor and lead and grow and learn to manage a team. I think I think you've got to first be connected. Like for you, you might not love digging ditches. Uh, but you got to connect to the mission of like, hey, I'm, this is for somebody. This is for somebody's home. This is, we're making people healthier. We're we're helping people's lives. Like you have to connect to why you're doing the work. If you don't enjoy the actual like digging ditches or you connect to like, hey, this is a good workout and I'm getting some yeah. vitamin D while we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. But, but a lot of people have a hard time moving from digging ditches to then being the person who manages 50 people who are digging ditches. And you have to love people training them you have to love mentoring them like even you going and volunteering to talk to the junior achievement kids speaks to your willingness to mentor and train and guide and and just try to give back right that's what you have to be doing for your team you're basically a little further ahead than them and you become an almost father figure or or uncle or older brother depending on the age gap between yeah. the people on your team to help them become better humans you know the goal is they they become better humans when they're with you they're not just collecting a paycheck is there a habit that you formed that helped you that helps you break through that introversion and make those videos every single day? Uh, so yes, yeah. so one default in the service. So I remember I was I was uh, late last year. I was speaking in front of a couple thousand people in Phoenix, and I I blanked out ten minutes before going on stage. I blanked out. I forgot what I was going to say. And in my head, like, oh, my God, Brendan Burchard and Dean Graziosi invited me to come and speak at their event. And I'm speaking after Eric Thomas and and I'm I'm blanking. I just imagine myself getting on stage and having a meltdown and just letting everybody down. And what I did was I, I peeked from backstage to the audience and I reminded myself, it's not even about me. It's about them. Like, I'm here for them. Stop being so selfish. Get out of your way. You've got knowledge. I can help them and go out there and serve. And so the serving gives me the strength to overcome the the anxiety and stress plus i built an identity around 
If I say scary, difficult, or hard, that means I have to do it. We often judge ideas too early. You look at the NFT yeah. market, right? NFTs are going to the moon. It's amazing. You know, board ape, crypto punk, let's go. Like, wag me, you know, all of this, right? Uh, <laughs> and, and then, you know, that was, the, that, was the, that was the hopium at the time. And now it crashed and, you know, a lot of people are negative. But it's, this isn't the final. NFTs are, are going to happen. Everybody will yeah. have a wallet. Everybody will have it. Whether we even call them NFTs or something else in the future, like the blockchain is undeniable. It will happen. Everything will be on the blockchain. Everything, everything we do will be on the blockchain. So what we see right now, as much as there's pessimism and negativity, this is not the final thing. And so mm -hmm. I see, I look at the same thing with the verification system. They're looking for ways to make money and they're looking for ways to combat a lot of the, the fake and the, the copycat the account. Yeah. But this, met, this is not an elegant solution either. What they've done is not elegant. And so it will be fixed. And somebody will fix it, whether it's, whether it's Instagram, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Elon Musk again, whether it's some new social media site that pops up, comes out of nowhere, you know, whether it's, you look at how quickly GPT came out of nowhere and just popped hard. Like maybe that's the next social network that pops hard and figures out verification as well. So it's, we're just, I, I don't want to judge. Is it great? No, but I'm also judging an unfinished product. It's like, if you gave me yeah. your book, that's half written. And said, Andre is like, this is not very good. Well, it's half written, so we can't judge it. Yeah. Something else will come from it. I don't know who solves the problem, but somebody will solve that problem. So, and this is where, you know, environment and habits and routines and people around you really, really, really matter because people just don't stay consistent. Right. Because it's so easy to fall back into our old patterns and something's going to happen that will, you know, throw you off course. And it's easy to re regress back to who you used to be. And it's like, it's this fight to be the person that you want to be. And it's a, it's a daily fight. And there's always things that are pulling at you to come back to who you were. And yeah. so that's where, whether it's uh, habits. So, you know, if you say that you're going to make YouTube videos, you put it in your calendar, yes. you know, and you say, okay, I'm going to make one video a week. And it's going to happen on Thursday afternoons or whenever it is, right? And you schedule it in. So even if you don't feel like doing it, you still show up and you do it because it's in your calendar. If you wait till you feel inspired to do it, you're, you're not going to do it. You know, some days you'll do it and some days you won't, but you won't be consistent. How can people out there, you know, discover for themselves when to actually make that call to let go as someone who wants to make things like happen and make them a success how do you know when to actually let go of something you let go when you don't love it anymore a business a relationship if you don't love it you should let go as soon as possible um and most people fall into zoo camps one they quit too soon they still love it this is see a lot of entrepreneurs they, they still love their business but it's not working out and so they quit on it this is why i went back to my business because i still loved it if you quit on it too soon and you still love it, you're going to regret that your whole life. Yeah. You're going to, in 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, whatever, you're going to look back and say, I could have, I could have done a little more. Yeah. You know, I, could have, I, I quit too soon. And so if you still love it, but it hasn't worked out yet, you have to keep going. Otherwise, you're going to regret it and use that as fuel. The flip side is a lot of people who stay in the thing for too long when, they're, when they stop loving it. Yeah. People stay in relationships too long when they've stopped loving it. They stay in businesses for too long when they've stopped loving it because they've had some success with it. You're not going to stay in a crappy business forever if the business has taken off, but then you stop loving it and you feel like you bought yourself a job when you quit ASAP. Yeah. Like sell it to somebody else and move on because you're never going to win doing work that you hate. Yeah. So while you still have one foot in the pool of like, it's just okay. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Can you tweak it so that you can love it? Or is it time to move on and go do something else? Um, this is what I do on the micro and the macro always. Uh, I still love making YouTube videos. I'm, I'm 6,000 videos in 10 years. I still love it. But the day that I stop liking making videos, if I have to go to my camera, be like, I'm, I don't know, I'm not feeling it. That's yeah. it. I'll, I'll, done. Yeah. Done. Like, I'll, I'll say, hey, you want to take over my YouTube channel? You know, try to sell it, move on, or something else, because I'm never going to win doing work that I hate. Yeah. And that's a big decision. How long were you thinking about inviting me on before you invited me on? Mm, it's a great question. 
I've been mulling on it for a long time. This is our mutual connection. I interviewed Kevin Palmieri, okay. who is from the Next Level University, and you've been on their show twice. Okay. So since I got in contact with him and he spoke so highly of you, that's how long. So six months, seven months? I mean, I don't think I even looked at your channel or what you're about or whatever. It was just your message and I decided. So yeah. I would have said yes seven months ago. Right. Exactly. Right. It's about taking action, jumping right into it. So, but so you never know. Like this is this is the thing, and whether it's as big as I might regret this in the future if I don't if I don't say yes or ask or or whatever. It's also just the mulling things over. Now, mm. again, kudos to you for then deciding to do it because a lot of people then never do it. They never reach out. They never ask. They never start that business. They never write the book. They never whatever the thing is that they want to do. A lot of people seven months later have already told themselves why they can't do that thing. And so you then, you know, congratulations, like you did it. And here we are. And I might've said no, or I might've ignored you or said, I hate anybody <laughs> named Nicholas. Like you never know. Yeah, like you never know true. when you send something, what the reaction is going to be. To learn how to use your mind to change your life, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. But when it comes to wanting to shift the way that you function, to get better or to perform better, or to show up better, or to move away from things like addictive behaviors, it's absolutely foolish for any of us, me included, 